my name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury makeup and food day brushes. And today we have another episode of a bunch of brushes, my brush series that airs every other Sunday. And this video has been requested by several of you and we are going to be talking about the Chikahoto Hamari series or Honor series. These are the ones with the Kazan squirrel hair and these are really, really hard to get right now. So this series came out last year and just recently, you know, they, they've had supply issues. So they've decided to discontinue the series, at least temporarily. We don't know whether that will be permanent or, you know, it's maybe it'll be something that comes out every couple of years. Maybe it won't be coming back. We have no idea. But uh, some of the retailers have been getting, you know, pieces here and there at a time and putting them for sale. So Visage USA and Food Aid Beauty have both, you know, been able to get stock of certain brushes. The KZ1 is technically discontinued right now and is not supposed to come back, but we don't know for sure if, if that's completely accurate. It may come back in very small quantities. So because these have been popping up, you know, people have been asking to kind of see a few more details about these brushes in case they are interested in getting them. Now, one thing to note, if you are interested in any of these brushes, you will not be able to get them on sale. So Visage USA and Fude Beauty are the two places that I have purchased my brushes from. And I did buy some backups of a few of these brushes. So I'll let you know, but this is my favorite brush series. So out of the ones that I have, this is by far my favorite. So I really love these. Now for purchasing these, again, I purchased from Visage USA and Food Aid Beauty. Their prices are not completely the same, but what you wanna look at is also the shipping price. So with Food Aid Beauty, you are going to get to $300 to get a minimum, you know, reach a minimum for free shipping. And otherwise I think it's about $25, at least that's what it is for me. They do have a rewards program as well, so you can sign up for that. You can get some dollars off your purchase, which can help negate the shipping costs as well. Visage USA, however, their threshold for the free shipping is, I believe, 110 US dollars. So depending on what you're purchasing, that may also influence your choice. But Visage USA, their prices per brush are typically a few dollars more expensive than those at Food Aid Beauty. So just something to consider if you happen to see things available at both retailers. So just a little bit of detail about these brushes. This is called the Hamari series. Hamari means honor. And these are using Kazan squirrel hair. And Kazan squirrels are a type of squirrel found in Russia. And they actually have softer squirrel hair than normal. So the hairs for the brushes, I believe, are all from the tail. So, uh, you know, they've got incredibly, incredibly soft hair. And one of the things that I have found about the Kazan squirrel brushes compared to like gray squirrel and so forth, you know, these are, they, they have a little bit more structure to them. Something with gray or blue squirrel fibers, they actually can be a little bit floppier. They don't have quite as much you know, snap or resistance. Whereas the Kazan Squirrel, you know, it's actually a little bit more, it has a little bit more, uh, you know, snap back to it. So that makes it a little bit easier to use with certain products. Whereas the softer, or not the softer, but the uh, blue and gray squirrel, because they are a little bit floppier and, you know, they don't have as much of that spring in the fibers, you know, a lot of times for application, you're going to get more of a softer look, whereas these are, will actually blend things in slightly better, in my opinion. The Kazan squirrel hair can actually come in a few different colors. So you can have black hair, you can have black hair with red tips and gray flecks along the fiber, and you can also have like mahogany color. So variation in shade, you know, is definitely something that you will see. And the handles here are made of granadillo wood, which is from a, it's a rare type of hardwood tree that it has a bunch of other names as well. So you may have heard of some of those. It's also known as purple heartwood. And this is a tree found in Central America. And it's, the wood is an expensive hardwood that is typically used for smaller projects and it's used for like detail work. So for example, they'll 
use it on musical instruments, um, like any of that like inlay detail and so forth that you might see, like for example, on a fancy guitar and so forth, they often use this type of wood for that. And that's because it has this really beautiful natural grain to it, but it's incredibly smooth. Like it almost feels ceramic, it's that smooth. And then we have a glossy black ferrule here. Now, when you purchase these brushes, they do come in the Food A wrapper. So it's just a plastic bag. And the sticker here shows you that it is a Food A brush made in the region of Kimono, Japan. And this is it. So, you know, don't expect a fancy box or anything like that. Uh, this is how they do come packaged. And this one here is already up, one of my backups. This is the KZ4, which is my very, very favorite blush brush. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and we're gonna go through each brush chronologically and I'll show you what it looks like and a few similar shapes. All right, so first up, this is the KZ1. This is the powder brush. And you can see that it's not quite a round brush. It's actually got an oval ferrule here. And this has, I mean, you can see it's like, it's rounded. The fibers actually start kind of um, decreasing or increasing in length about here. So it is gonna be a rounded brush and it's incredibly soft. Now, all of these brushes, you, these hairs are delicate, so you wanna use them just for powder products. Now, personally with this brush, I prefer to use something like this for finishing powder. When you use it for like setting powder and you're putting it on something damp, you know, like foundation or something, you know, for me, for such a delicate soft brush, I feel like that is probably not the best use. So I usually use goat hair for setting powder and then I'll use something ultra soft like this for finishing powder and it gives a really nice soft finish. Now, as you see the amount of spring in these bristles, this will give you a slight buff on your skin with this. So you can see how it flows over, but it's not floppy. Now, in comparison, this is the Chikahoto F01. This is the Silver Fox hair. This is another great brush. It's also incredibly soft and it has a little bit more spring than a blue or gray squirrel as well. Now, if you look at the shapes of these, you can see that this one actually fans out a little bit more and the overall, it is a smaller face brush here. So, if you're looking at the diameter of the ferrule and so forth, it is a little smaller. It just fans out a little bit more naturally. So looking at the Surratt face brush, you can see that the Surratt face brush is gonna be slightly taller. We've got a longer handle here, but if we're looking at the actual length of the hairs in the brushes, the KZ1 actually has slightly longer fibers. So the longer fibers will make it a little bit more it gives it a little bit more of a softer movement. The Surratt face brush here, you know, we've got a round ferrule. This is a rounded brush and it's very densely packed. So this is fairly dense for a squirrel hair brush. And you can see that it has plenty of play and movement here with the bristles as well. And because of the length of these fibers and how densely packed they are, you do have you know, quite enough, in my opinion, <laughs> enough kind of like snapback. So just for comparison here. And then this is the Chikahoto Maki 2. And you can see that this one actually does have a fairly similar ferrule shape as well. Um, it, the fibers are going to be slightly longer than the KZ and it actually has more of this flat round appearance. Okay. Again, this is going to be an oval ferrule here. So because of this one here, you actually can like do a little bit more of like a painting motion. Whereas something like this one, this one's a little bit more round than the, the, uh, Maki 2. So this one, you know, swirling. You can also do painting, but you know, this one here, the flat round shape is just going to be slightly different. And just to show you these lined up, we've got the Maki 2 here, and then this is the Beautylish Lunar New Year brush. This is the one from this past year with the Oxen, and you can see that these two have a pretty similar shape, but the Beautylish is going to be uh, smaller, so it's smaller overall. And... Other than that, you can see 
you know, same kind of deal compared to the Maki 2, just smaller. So overall, this KZ1, as I mentioned, is currently discontinued. If it does pop up, I guarantee that it's going to sell out pretty quickly because it was kind of discontinued by surprise. Like nobody really expected it to just kind of disappear from the market right away. And I know that there are a lot of people wanting this. So if it pops back up and you happen to see it and it's something you're interested in, don't wait because these brushes, seriously, they can sell out in five minutes or less. I'm not even joking. Next up, we have the KZ2. And you can see this one has more of that flat round shape, similar to the Chikahoto Maki 2 and the Beautylish Lunar New Year. Now, size-wise, it's a little bit more comparable to the Lunar New Year one, but you can see that the Beautylish Lunar New Year brush is definitely much larger overall. So this brush, the KZ2, it's a cheek brush. I personally really like it for soft blush applications. So it's not gonna buff anything in, but if you're looking for a very soft wash of color, this feels like heaven on your cheeks. This is one of my favorite brushes and I, I really love this. So I don't find it to be quite as versatile on the cheek as the KZ4, um, just because it does have the very long fibers. Let me just show you the KZ4 real quickly. Here's the KZ4, so you can see it's a much smaller blush brush, but because of the shape of it, you can get more of that buffy motion. Whereas this one, you wanna use this with something that you can apply delicately and softly, perhaps a more pigmented blush where you just want a soft wash of color with it, but you're not gonna get any buffy motion from this. So as I mentioned, this one does have a similar shape to the Beautylish Lunar Near brush, but it is gonna be smaller. It's also a little bit more pinched in the ferrule compared to the Beautylish Lunar New Year. And another similar brush here, this is the Armani Blush Brush. And you can see that it is a taller brush overall, and the hairs are actually going to be longer. Now, this Armani blush, it brush is goat and synthetic mixed. And it's, I mean, let's face it, it's, it's not as soft at all. So usually with this brush, I like to use this more for dusting like a loose setting powder on. Whereas something like this, you know, because it's so incredibly soft, I, I use this for blush. And then my last comparison here for this brush is the Chikahoto F03. And you can see that the F03 is slightly more rounded than the KZ2. And it's also smaller overall, but it's also a great brush. This one, however, is going to be more dense and it has, it's kind of like a cross between the KZ2 and the KZ4. So you can see that it's kind of like right in between the two shapes and sizes. Next, we have the Chikahoto KZ3 brush, and you can see that this is going to be a long candlestick shape. Now, this is a fantastic brush, and I know for many people, it is their favorite brush from the series. I personally don't use candlestick shape quite as often as other people do. However, for candlestick shape, this is my favorite out of the ones I have. So you can see that it is a little bit longer than many other candlestick brushes for me. I will use this for highlight. If you ever need to dust like powder, like in the T-zone or something, that's a great purpose for this. And you can also use this for contour as well. I, or, or bronzer, you know, but I don't really contour and bronze too frequently. And when I do, I typically prefer something that is a little bit more stiff. Um, to kind of buff the product in a little bit more. So for me, I typically use this one mostly for highlight. Now for comparison, this is the highlight brush in the Z series, and you can see that it is much smaller overall compared to the KZ3. Uh, and I mean, it is smaller all around. So it's smaller in diameter, both of these have round ferrules, but you can see that overall the KZ3 is going to be a lot larger, you know, it's longer fibers and so forth. So again, it works beautifully on the skin. Another comparison, this is the Surratt highlight brush. And sorry, mine's a little misshapen here, but you can see that again, we don't come to as much of a point with this and it's much smaller overall. And if you're looking just at the hairs, you can see how much smaller that actually is. 
And then last up, this is the Refer 19 brush. And you can see how much larger the handle is. And this is from the original Refer brushes. So it might have a shorter handle now, I'm not sure. But here we go. You can see that diameter of the ferrule is still gonna be larger in the KZ3. And again, the hairs are longer as well. And again, we've got just a little bit more of that point. You can actually see that it actually comes to a true point, whereas these other ones all are a little bit more rounded at the very tip. So that's something that makes this brush special. It's a really, really great candlestick shape. Now let's take a look at the KZ4, and this is my favorite. And if you see a little color residue on here, I did just use this for blush. So there may still be a little powder left on here. But this is my very, very favorite blush brush of all. And one of the things I like about it, again, we've got this round ferrule here. You can see that it actually goes a little bit flat on the top. And this, you can apply something very softly and delicately like you could with, for example, the KZ2, but you can also buff it in. And because it has a, a smaller surface area, for me, you know, my head is a little bit on the smaller side. So it actually works really well to be a little bit more targeted. So I love this brush so, so much. It's also incredibly soft. And let's compare it with a few others. So this is the Surratt cheek brush. And you can see here that again, we've got this round ferrule. It's smaller overall, and it does go a little bit flat on the top, but just because it is you know much smaller, you don't have quite as much of that flat surface area here. And by contrast, when you, you can see how much less movement there is than with the KZ4. So just something to note. Now, quick comparison here, we've got the Surratt cheek brush and the Chikahoto Z4, which, you know, these are similar brushes, but you can see that the Surratt fibers are slightly shorter in length. And this is gonna be a round ferrule on the Surratt, whereas the Z4 is slightly more oval. So you've got more of a flat round here. And again, they both go a little flat. Now the Z4 in comparison with the KZ4, you can see is going to be different. So we've got the round ferrule on the KZ4, whereas again, the Z4 is actually more oval. And you can see that this is going to be a little bit bigger, bigger brush head. And look at the movement here compared to here. The Z4, you know, super soft fibers and they are moving, but because it is a smaller brush and the way it's packed, you actually have less movement than you do with the KZ4. Now, another thing to know is each individual brush hair has a little bit more structure or snap to it in the KZ4 compared to in the Z4 series. So what that means is you are able to get more of a buff with this compared to the Z4. Some other blush brush favorites. This is the Sonia G Classic Cheek. And you can see that this one has a pinched ferrule, it's oval, but we still have more of that round brush shape. And you can see how densely packed this is and how much less movement there is for this. This is one of my favorite blush brushes. And if I'm using a cream product, the Sonia G is the one that I reach for because it works really well. That, that density in here really works well to kind of buff in a cream. But if you're using a powder product, the KZ4 still wins. Now, another one from Sonia G, this is the Designer Pro. And again, we've got a pinch barrel here. It's more of a flat round shape. Just wanted to show you the size difference here. And this is the Cheek Pro from Sonia G. Now, one thing to show you that Sonia G handles are longer, by the way, but again, pinch barrel, flat round brush, but it does go flat on the top. They have a similar shape uh, if you're looking at the profile, but again, the it's just gonna be much thicker and longer overall than the in the KZ4 than it is in the Sonia G. And this is the soft cheek from Sonia G, which you can see the hairs are gonna be slightly longer. And this is more of a, a round ferrule here, like the KZ4, but if you look at the diameter of it, it is going to be much smaller. So this is goat hair and you can see how much flex and give there is on that compared to the KZ4. So you can see that the goat snaps back 
more strongly than the KZ4. And next up we have the KZ5. This is the highlight brush. And this is another great brush. I like to use this one for highlight. And honestly, between this and the KZ3, I usually use this one more for highlight because it is smaller, more targeted. And so depending on what kind of highlight I use, I like them to be a little bit more subtle. So I just have a little bit more control with this brush versus the KZ3. However, they're both great, so it really depends on highlighting formula. You can see that this is gonna be a flat round brush, and I wanted to compare it to the Wayne Goss Airbrush. So if we take a look, they both have the similar shape. The Wayne Goss Airbrush is gonna be a little bit thinner, and it's smaller all around. And this is the Sonya G Cheek Pro. And again, the Sonya G has longer handles, but you can see overall, they do have a similar shape here, but this one is going to be a little bit more rounded on the KZ5. We don't get that flat top like we do on the KZ4 or the Cheek Pro, but it's also gonna be thicker in diameter as well. And let's move on to the eye brushes. This is the KZ06. So you've got kind of a large, shader style brush. This is fantastic for one and done eyeshadows. Hands down, it's my favorite brush for one and done shadows. This is a really, really great eyeshadow brush. Now, typically I prefer much smaller eyeshadow brushes. This style is usually something that I don't really gravitate towards, but this brush for some reason just works so much better. So you can use this in the crease. You've, it's, you can see that it is going to be big enough here that you can use this part in the crease. You can also blend it here and just look at how it bends. So it's got plenty of structure, but it's incredibly soft and heavenly on your hand or well, on your face. And it just, it lays down the product really well. So it actually picks up the product well and deposits it, deposits it well. These KZ brushes, they have a little bit more grip on the powder products than a typical squirrel hairbrush, in my opinion. So just a few brushes for comparison. Again, this is the KZ06. This is the Jumbo Blender in the Sonya G Kiyaki set. So you can see that the handles are actually gonna be shorter in the Kiyaki set, just slightly. But you can see that the brush head overall is gonna be smaller and you can see how much, you know, it's, it's dense and there's not quite as much flex as with the KZ06. Now, another thing to note is, you know, you can actually see the fibers increasing in length starting about here. And it's, um, you know, it, it's more stark, you know, it's it's more of a steep, a, a steep incline. Whereas this is a little bit more gradual and we get more of a point at the top. I'm not sure how well that shows up on the camera, but I think that's one of the things that makes this brush so great for me. Now, this is the Jumbo Blender that is in the Sky series. So you can see that my Kiyaki Jumbo Blender and my Dyed Squirrel or Dyed Goat um, from the Sky series, they're slightly different in shape. Part of that is the nature of the fiber. And then also, you know, different manufacturing. You know, they weren't done at the same time, the same person. So here you can see just a little bit of a difference in shape and with the sky set, again, you can see how much smaller that is. So here's the flex and give compared to the KZ6. You can see that the dyed um, jumbo blender has more flex because it is gonna be a little bit softer than undyed go hair, but still not to the point of the KZ6. And then this is the worker two from Sonya G. So you can see that, again, this is going to be much more similar to the Jumbo Blender, but you can see that the Jumbo Blender here is going to be a little bit uh, more narrow here, and it's also slightly, uh, just maybe very slightly taller. And this is my Chikahoto F05 brush, and I thought that this, the KZ6 was going to be most similar to this when I originally ordered it. You can see that the F05 has longer fibers and look at the flex here versus the KZ6. This is going to be a little bit stiffer. This is a great brush and I really like this one, but this one for me 
uh, I think it just it's a little bit more versatile because of that flex and give with it it does work a little bit better for me in the crease to get more of a soft wash and a soft blend whereas this one you know you've got the length on there and it's just a little bit stiffer both fantastic but for me I use them slightly differently and when I say I use them slightly differently, I typically don't use the FO5 in the crease once in a while, but this one, I will do like the whole eye look. I'll add a little bit in the crease and do, you know, the, the lid shade with this. So absolutely love the KZ6. Now moving on to the KZ07, this is going to be a small shader style brush. You can see that it doesn't have quite as much flex because again, it is going to be a smaller brush head overall. So this works well for putting color in a more targeted area. And this one here is the F06 from Chikahoto. And you can see that this one has more of a tapered appearance, whereas this is going to be more rounded, more like an upside down U, whereas this is like a rounded V, if that makes sense. So they're gonna be a little bit different in application here, but the amount of flex is, it's much closer with these. Um, this one here, the KZ07 has, it's got slightly more flex than the F06, but again, most of that's gonna be due to the shape. Uh, Size-wise, you can see that the F06 is slightly smaller. And then this is the Chikahoto T7. This is from the Takumi series. This is undyed goat hair. You can see that they have a very, very similar shape, but the KZ7 is just smaller overall. And then last up, I wanted to compare it with the Sunyuji Soft Shader, which is my go-to shader style brush. And you can see that the Soft Shader is definitely gonna be wider and it has you know, a little bit more of a gradual um, change in length compared to the KZ7, which is a little bit more, uh, you know, all of a sudden, it's pretty much vertical and then switches. Whereas this, you start changing like here, it's more gradual. So you can see overall, size-wise, the soft shader is gonna be larger. And last up, we have the KZ08. Now, this is a fantastic pencil brush. A lot of times you see a pencil brush like this and they're pretty stiff. So, you know, depending on how you're using it, it can feel a little harsh on your skin at times. You know, it can feel not like scratchy, but just like there's not as much bend to it. So it can feel a little bit stiffer. And this one doesn't do that. This is a soft pencil brush, yet it's pointed enough that you can get exactly where you want it. So, you know, I use this inner corner and I use this lower lash line or you know you can even use it to help kind of drag out a wing if you're using sh powder sh shadow for that but fantastic pencil brush probably my favorite and some comparisons this is the T8 so you can see that again similar shape but the T8 is going to be longer and this is another one that I love. It's undyed goat hair, so it is gonna be a little bit stiffer, not quite as soft as the KZ8. But again, this one you can use with creams uh, and liquids, whereas you cannot with the KZ8. So overall, these are fairly similar. It's just that the KZ8 is going to be a little bit smaller. In contrast, here is the Chikahoto F07. So this is a pencil brush from the F0 series. And you can see that this one does not come to as much of a point and it doesn't have quite as much flex. So this one's gonna be a little bit stiffer. It's also a great pencil brush, but because it doesn't come to that point as much, it's not quite as targeted. So this will provide a, a little bit of a thicker area of color compared to the KZ8. And then also in comparison, we have the mini booster in the Kiyaki set. I just wanted to show you how much rounder the mini booster shape is compared to these. And this isn't truly a pencil brush, but just wanted to share that one. And then we have my favorite pencil brush from Sonya G. This is pencil one. And you can see that this one is gonna definitely be a lot stiffer. This is great though, if you want a lot of control and um, also a great brush, but definitely much smaller 
all around here. I hope those comparisons were helpful. And again, if you see any of these brushes pop up and you are interested in any of them, don't hesitate because they will sell fairly quickly, uh, particularly the KZ one. This one's in high demand. So this one, I would expect if it comes back to sell out in minutes, whereas with the others, you'll probably have like a day or two. So just something to note. Now the KZ4 has been around, that's come back a lot. I think they have more quantity of these. So this one's a little bit easier to get. Um, I've seen it actually come back several times at this point. So, oh, this one's the five that I'm holding, <laughs> but um, here's the four. So if you're interested in the four, this one might be a little bit easier to, to get. Now, my personal favorites from this series, I would have to pick the KZ4. This would be my number one favorite. And then I'm going to take the KZ1 completely out of the running because that one's just so hard to get. I don't know if that's even going to be possible. But from then, my next favorite face brush would be the KZ2, which is this one here. I absolutely love this. And then from there, I think, you know, I, I would prefer the three because it's a unique shape, but practically I prefer the the five so then I would go five and then three and that's my ranking for the face brushes for the eye brushes I would choose the KZ6 then the eight and then the seven so those are my rankings there now if you just want to pick up a couple of brushes to try from the series my very favorites would be the KZ4 and the KZ6 these are my two absolute favorites now, I did mention that I picked up some backups, so I do already have a KZ4 backup, and I picked up another KZ4, so I will have three of them because, yes, it really is my favorite blush brush of all, and, you know, that way I can rotate through those. And then I also picked up uh, backups of the three eye brushes. So uh, I think I'm good. But if I see the KZ2 pop up, it's possible I would pick up another one. And honestly, I don't really like to get tons of backups, but for my favorite brushes, I do. So the Sonia G Soft Shader, I have several of those. That's a favorite. I also have two of the Sonia G Pencil Ones because I use that one a ton. And um, those are pretty much the only ones I have duplicates of until now. And that's because these are just so incredibly soft. They're my softest brushes. They're softer than my Silver Fox. They're softer than the Blue and the Gray Squirrel. They're just the most luxurious feeling things on your skin. And especially for me doing YouTube too, with all of the like swatching and washing my face, sometimes my skin gets very sensitive and brushes can actually hurt, even the super soft ones. These, you know, that's what I go to in those situations. So they're just incredibly soft. And I have to say that they just perform beautifully. Now, you know, obviously these are meant for powder products and they're, they're soft. They're still not going to give you as much of a buffed in performance as goat hair will. However, I would say that they still have a little bit more grip than you know traditional squirrel hairs like blue and gray squirrel so they have a little bit more grip on the product there so they're going to pick that up and deposit that a little bit more easily so if you have something that you know is a little bit firmer in the pan or perhaps something that's a sheer wash you can get a little bit more pigment from the kz brushes in my opinion and then compared to the fo series i absolutely love these as well they pick up the product really well also, but there's just something about the flexibility of these and the amount of snap in the KZ brushes that I just prefer. So this is my number one brush series. If I could, I would get a whole second set of the series, but I am I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna be good and just pick up you know duplicates when I can of the ones that are my favorites. Now do you want to take the risk and see if these come back in a few years and then pick them up then? Um, that's really a, a great question. I don't know the answer to that because we do have situations where the quality of products is declining and supplies are dwindling. So it is, in my opinion, if you can get it now, get it now while you can and then just be happy you have it. But if, 
if you want to, you know, wait or you're not sure, or, you know, maybe you want to pick up one now and then if it comes back in a couple of years or at some future date, you know, then maybe pick up a couple more. It's definitely something to do. So I don't know whether the prices will stay the same or anything like that. So I know I have gotten a few questions about that. And unfortunately, that's the best answer I can get. Now, as for purchasing these, I will post any information I see from Visage or Food Aid Beauty um, on restocks. So definitely pay attention to my Instagram stories. I'm at Alexis Zhang. Also pay attention to uh, the community tab. CD Japan is another retailer. I am not sure if they have any of these. I personally have not ordered from CD Japan, but it is another retailer that a lot of Food Aid brush lovers really enjoy ordering from. So it's definitely worth looking at and contacting them if you're interested in any of these brushes as well. But for me, um, I will definitely notify you of anything I see from Food Aid Beauty or Visage USA. And definitely if you're on Instagram, make sure you are following Food Aid Beauty and you're paying attention to their stories because they put their restock information up there and you know, it goes quickly. So I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, please be sure to leave them down below. And thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you very soon. Have a great day and stay safe and healthy.